So here we go. So hi everyone. Yeah. So hi hi everyone. So this is our project name as Philo Biblian Spelling Set. So we have uh, the name selected by AI algorithm only, and uh, stay tuned with us, and uh, we will take you through the uh, various processes of our uh, project and the and the, and the all all about the process. So this is my co-fellows, the fantastic co-fellows, uh, Joe from London, uh, me from Kolkata, and Varga from uh, Ahmedabad, India. Next slide, please, Varga. Okay, so introducing me, so I am Dibendu. I am. I started my journey from a small village uh, at West Bengal. Uh, this is my ancestral home. So I spent my childhood days and all the uh, school and college days here, with the with surrounded by this ancestor, uh, the 110 years old Korean thin pillars and all the uh, village landscapes um, surrounds me. So I spent uh, my school college days here, and I, I did a lot of. Uh, um, outing there and my artistic journey starts from there only and parallelly I started my uh, uh, engineering study from from there only and after that my 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 journey uh, as an artist changes a lot when I was migrated from my village to a city Kolkata for uh, due to my professional career as a computer engineer and that uh, suddenly reflects in my painting and my paintings are uh, more become a juxtaposition of uh, the the my childhood memories as well as the uh, few organic forms from nature. So these are few important shows I have done. Uh, last was the, uh, the solid quiz in the uh, Anand Art Gallery, New Delhi. Uh, parallelly, I was I was uh, a, I was a, a computer engineer and and my I'm pursuing I pursued. A lot of certifications um, on on uh, Ansible, Red Hat, and, and and as a cloud architect, and I, somewhere I feel like that I should uh, combine these two parallel journey into one, and I started practicing uh, take art a little bit, and in the in the lockdown time, this is the the last painting I have done, and by this fellowship, this is actually a, a really great opportunity for me to. Uh, Introduce uh, to um, combine these two parallel journey into 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 one. So thank you, Vargav. You can. Uh, yeah. Hello, I am Vargav. Uh, I am a new media designer. I like to work with cultural heritage, uh, craft communities, rural communities, and see how interactive technologies can enhance the experience of our cultural and natural heritage. So this is a picture from my graduation projects three years ago, where I designed a, a, a 3D, uh, like uh, I designed a, a archiving system for craft communities. You can see two of the young crafts, uh, craft persons are having tea while they're archiving their products. I like to work in rural spaces with new technologies. So uh, in the left, you can see one of our project where we designed an interactive signage which welcomes people with the sounds that characterize the village. And in the right side is one of our project, uh, which we started in January. Um, it's an interpretation center. Yeah, this project is uh, with my friend Sarvesh, and he's also a new media designer. We made this project. It's called Fabric of Truth. It reveals generative definition of truth. And basically, it was made to protest against the idea of mysticism, which says there is only one truth. These are my current project, which will be soon installed in the Kaziranga National Park. It has two games, uh, tangible uh, experience and a virtual reality. Basically, it talks about the elephant and train conflict and how that can be uh, resolved. And this is my uh, like passion project, slow moving project where I'm exploring how species would evolve in mid-Anthropocene. You can see the pigeon plus. It's a, it's a pigeon which lives in smart cities and has been infected uh, with the Wi-Fi signals because, because it lives on the Wi-Fi towers. Yeah, Joe? Hello, um, so I'm an artist uh, based in Manchester, UK. 
and work with installation, sculpture and film, but with a tendency to incorporate technical aspects into my artwork, whether that's a sound piece through hidden speakers, VR, or using QR codes to display a hundred different films, as you see here. And so my artwork is centered on the futile search for certainty of understanding and perceived hierarchies of knowledge. And there's always a humorous element within any of my work, which playfully explores complex relationships between putative information and experiential understanding. In short, I really love the way that serious subjects can be explored and given a different dimension, often through humor and absurdity. And like sticking your head in a dome and putting a VR headset on. Um, so I'm currently working towards a solo exhibition that will be a large scale tangled installation where all artworks suggest connections to each other. Um, this new exhibition and new work will include uh, four short films, a large scale floor and wall mounted sculpture that includes a hundred different colored, different sized handmade velvet brains connected to each other by electrical wires to make up a luxurious, sprawling, brightly colored sculptural brain garden called, I beg your pardon, that meanders through the gallery and that appears to grow from the walls and floor, creating defined pathways through the gallery between wire roots and dense brain beds. And this exhibition will imagine a world half filled with facts and half filled with imagination that, mi that mirrors our own manufactured sense of reality. Recurring motifs of family roots, hair roots, unexplainable imagined sensory understandings, neural pathways, tree and plant roots, how fungi manipulates and transmits plants and animal behavior, AI machine learning, telepathy, the presence of ghosts and the unpredictability of hair that will flow through the works displayed in the space. Okay, so our uh, project is called Philobiblian's Palimpsest, not easy to say. Um, it was a title that came up um, through the GPT-3 um, and we didn't know it, what a Philobiblian was, but apparently a guy called Richard de Berry in 1345 wrote a fantastic um, book, which was basically the basis of libraries. So our init initial mishmash of ideas and questions included cooperation, collaboration, harmony between man and nature, narratives of human interaction, the machine stops, Dibiendu's painting, talking with the machine, talking with humans. And we eventually decided on using the machine stops which is a very prescient um, piece of text from 1909, written by E.M. Forster, where the machine is completely in control and people kind of live underground in these kind of cell-like structures. Um, I'm gonna read a really small section from the opening of the book. Imagine, if you can, a small room, hexagonal in shape, like the cell of a bee. It is lighted neither by window nor by lamp, yet it is filled with soft radiance. There are no apertures for ventilation, yet the air is fresh. There are no musical instruments, and yet at the moment that my meditation opens, the room is throbbing with melodious sounds. So we decided because each generation has their own idea of what the future might be, which is usually influenced by film and literature, we thought we would decide, um, we would try and find out what the machine's idea of the future is using um, mostly GPT-3 and, and other um, uh, programs. So um, yes, we began feeding original text from the machine stops into GPT-3. We were asking it what its version of the future is based on those original texts and then using the outputs um, for the work that um, Pagarf is about to describe. We are also having parallel visual explorations where the text that was generated from machine, we were trying to generate visuals in uh, trying to explore what machine imagines, like how we think uh, when we read something, we imagine something. So, and we were also using another same machine learning to enlarge the images. So, Ibn? yeah. And so uh, we, we uh, tried uh, feeding the uh, human idea to the machine, like my, how the ideation of my painting to, with the various algorithms to the, uh, to, the, to the machine. And then we tried to combining both the machine's idea and then get what machine uh, machine can generate. So we use uh, various algorithms and uh, deep learning generated an art video like uh, AI, various AI tools uh, to uh, generate uh, machine created images. So that was the, uh, that was the ideation um, behind that. So till now we were tinkering with all the tools and what, what is coming out curiously. 
and then we reflected on our process and we uh, we could articulate that we are basically building on to the whole idea of uh, calling uh, imagining machine as a being and as a human being and having expressing some of its ideas so uh, our project became that we apply ethnographic uh, framework to ai and try to how we read humans we'll try to read idea ideas of machines by what machine produces and we defined our process that we generate images uh, sorry we generate text from gpt3 then we'll generate visuals from uh, basically run runway and then we'll merge some of the key visuals with uh, a hand drawn painting which was lebendus painting and then we'll curate entire uh, we'll curate all this content with a conversation with gpt3 Sure. Okay. So, so we began an analog process then because there were so many bits of text and you need that kind of human interaction in order to um, make some kind of emotional sense of the um, work. So the, the we, we cut up all the different um, uh, outputs and then tried putting them together to try and, and make some kind of narrative of what was coming out of the machine. So then it became this kind of whole process which was part machine part human um, as a kind of collabor collaboration between the machine and us. Um, and the, the um, texts that we ended up cho choosing um, were, were those that were kind of ambiguous or that suggested scenarios um, and had some kind of emotional content and some kind of quasi-philosophical musings by the machine. And this is my table with them all cut out. I was, yeah, lots and lots put together. So so these are these are visible based on narratives means we have uh, selected the all the important texts for what we what have generated by gpt3 and then we feeded those texts to the machine and get the machine generated images and uh, collected them all and there are uh, really uh, some of the text where uh, the machine actually asks uh, says about some kind of sounds and meditation so we selected uh, a, a, a piece of painting from uh, my archive that is a painting of the speaker and then it merges with the uh, machine generated images and then then we uh, and then how we created the uh, cover pages and we co-design uh, like not co-design we had a conversation with machine trying to see how it imagines the whole book and machine told us about hexagon forms uh, tools and handcraft and sizes machine also gave us the title possible titles and then we uh, compiled all these things, uh, trying to make sense of all the ideas of machines in a single form, which was emerging as uh, uh, as as a non-linear book. Yeah. Joe, and um, so um, the title, as we said before, um, means lover of books, but a palimpsest is a manuscript or writing on which later writing has been superimposed, which seemed to fit nicely with our project. Um, and this particular piece of text that you can see now, if you see, if you read through it, it says, I am in a house with four small rooms. And that particular piece of text, which sits in the middle underneath um, the Philobiblium's Pambuset, Palimpset um, uh, title page, um, it was the catalyst for the, the structure of the four rooms. So room one, room two, room three, and room four. And then each of those rooms, begins with um, a text that seemed um, to set the scene for that, though, that particular story. Um, we, you can see here, we put the book together. There are very, very, because a hexag hexagon is such a brilliant um, shape in terms of making space and suggesting kind of um, different structures, cells of beehive, structures of carbon, it seemed to work really, really well. We also added an extended experience, which was not part of the uh, machine uh, generated content, but it, was, it is like a fictional archaeology tool, which will reveal sources of the machine generated content. So it, it actually works. You can go to our site and there is a full cop like digital copy. You can scan visuals with RTY app and explore this. And here is our final scope. like how this project could be taken forward is, uh, Joe, would you like to share? 
Yeah, so we, we had lots of kind of conversations around that kind of man machine um, way of working. And in terms of the um, the um, AR over the, and, and this notion of a palimpsest, I mean, we came, became really interested in what it means to scan something and then something else to come up from underneath. So, um, you know, scanning a fiction and coming up with a new fiction generated by the machine just seems like a really interesting way. And things like, you know, could you could you scan over something that might be fake news and then the thing that comes up is the truth? Is there a way of doing those kind of things? So they're the kind of that's the kind of way that um, yeah one of one of the ways in which we were thinking of taking it forward. It's all. guys. Thank you everyone, especially yeah. Hassan for the amazing session and all thank our you, thank fellows you for the amazing conversations. Yes, thank you. Thank you to the whole team. Fabulous. Thanks to all of us.